So first of all, let's classify the human. How it is classified? The human being falls under the kingdom animalia. It is classified under the phylum Chordata, under the subphylum Vertebrata. Mammalia is the class, and it is classified under the order Primate. The family is Hominidae. Genus is Homo, and species is Sapiens. So the binomial is the Homo sapiens. That is the scientific name of the human being. So I have displayed one picture over here where a clinician is inspecting a oral cavity. That is the mouth. So inspection it is the procedure where the body is observed with a naked eye for any deviation from the normal. That is the first step when first step actually performed when the patients arrive the clinician and over here the clinician is examining the lymph node present in the neck and this technique used in, in the clinical setting is known as palpation. Palpa actually means to touch so over here the palpation means to feel the body surface with the hand. Here the third picture is displayed. Here the clinician is examining the chest with the help of the stethoscope and this technique is known as auscultation. So ausculta actually means to listen. So this procedure involves the listening of the body sounds to evaluate the functioning of the different body organs by using a sound amplifying device like a stethoscope. And this is the fourth step here. The clinician is doing a technique known as percussion. So percuss actually means to beat. Here in this technique the tapping is done on the body surface with the fingertip and the resulting echo is analyzed. So to apply all these techniques the proper knowledge on the anatomy is very much essential. That's why for any proper diagnosis or any proper investigations of the human body need the proper knowledge on the anatomy. Every medical science begins where the anatomy do live. That's why it is the preliminary approach to get acquainted with the human body. So how the anatomy is defined? Anatomy is actually a science which deals with the structures and relationship among them. So I have got the two points over here. One, the structure and the interrelationship. So in in the structural aspect, we studied about how the particular organs look like. What are the different elevations present? What are the different depressions present? And what are the different lobules present within that particular organ? That we deal in the structural analysis. And anatomy, it is not limited only to the study of a particular organ. We need to know about the interrelationship among the organs present nearby. Because when you are approaching a patient, Suppose if there is any injury present in the forearm. So when you are doing any surgical aspect, you need to know what are the structures like nerves, blood vessels, muscles present around that particular wound. So that you might limit the chances of damage to that neurovascular structures or muscles present over there. That's why the interrelationship study is also very much important. That's why. Over here in the anatomy, we'll deal about the study of the structures and the interrelationship about the organs or structures present around that particular organ. So, term anatomy is derived from the Greek word anatome. So, tome means to cut, ana means apart. So, to cut apart actually is the anatomy. And we have a similar term known as dissection. So, it is just a technique. So dissection also means over here. This means apart, and section means the act of cutting. So over here, the dissections and anatomy, both of them have got the similar meaning, but difference is that dissection is mere a technique, whereas anatomy is a science. That is the difference between the anatomy and dissection. Though the meaning is similar. And basically, the anatomy is studied with the help of the cadaveric dissection. So dissection actually means the careful cutting apart of a body structures to study the interrelationship among them. And there is difference between dissections and butchering. 
the dissection is a very careful cutting whereas butchering is a random cutting that is sloughing out of the body parts randomly that is the butchering but dissection is a very careful cutting technique to study the interrelationship of the body parts but Today, the study of the anatomy is not only limited to the dissections. We have got the various radiological techniques which are contributing in the advancement of the anatomical knowledge. Here I have displayed one picture where I am dissecting the human body. So anatomy deals mostly with the structures of the human body. Whereas a similar science, there is physiology which deals with the function of the body part. Since the function cannot be separated from the structure, they go parallelly. So I have, I can say that the anatomy is like a theater where the action takes place. So we, I have shown you one picture of the kidney where we can see that this is the cortex of the kidney and in the medulla we can see the renal pyramids and this is the area called the hilum. And in the hilum, we can see the different structures like the renal pelvis and the blood vessels. So, this aspect of the kidney, like the cortex of the kidney, the medulla of the kidney, where the renal pyramids are present, the hilum, where the neurovascular structures along with the pelvis are present. So, this study or this aspect of a particular kidney are studied in the anatomy. And we know that the function of a kidney is the filtration of a blood and formation of the urine. So that aspect of the kidney is studied in the physiology. So over here the anatomy and physiology seems to move together in the body but we study them differently in two different branches of science that is anatomy and physiology. But in the human body we see that some of the structures of the body are so designed that we can imagine their functions very clearly like when you see the bones of the skull the different bones of the skull they are tightly adhered with one another it is so because under to it there is a very vital organ the brain so to provide the protection to the brain the covering structures formed by the bone they are tightly adhered so tightly adherence denotes that it has to provide the protection and when you see the fingers in the fingers we have the different small bones because in with the help of the finger we have to provide the manipulative action for which the movement is required that's why we have got the small bones and it denotes that number of joints greater the number of joints greater is the mobility that is also the physiological correlation or the functional correlation with the anatomical aspect but this is not the true case in every body part the, i have just try to correlate about the structural function relationship only with the help of this bones of the skulls and the bone of the fingers now we are going to talk about the different subdivisions of the anatomy what are the different other branches of the anatomy that i am going to deal about right now the first one is the microscopic anatomy so the microscopic anatomy is the study of the human body with the aid of the microscope so in the microscopic anatomy also we have got the two branches one is the cytology that is the study of the internal structure of the individual cell that is the smallest unit of a life and we have the another branches in the microscopic anatomy that is the histology with the help of which we examining the tissue that is tissue it is actually the group of cells that work together for a particular function here this is the cell under the light microscope when the cell is observed under the light microscope after the proper staining it looks like like this like we can see the cytoplasm present over here the nuclei of the cells and the extracellular materials present around the cell so this is how a cell look like under the microscope and we have the another branch of the anatomy that is the gross anatomy so gross anatomy it is the macroscopic anatomy 
not the microscopic macroscopic anatomy that considers the features which are visible to our naked eye and in the gross anatomy also there is another part or another branch of anatomy that is the surface anatomy so surface anatomy it is the study of the different visceras or different body organs present inside our body to study them superficially because when any clinician deals with the patient they are not going to dissect the human body and see the body organ each and every time that's why we need to know where the particular organ is present how it is normally structured or how it is normally looks like and what are its normal features if we know that through the study of the gross anatomy we can diagnose or we can relate with the changes occurred in them through the surface palpation that is we deal in the surface anatomy and the next one is the regional anatomy when we see the human body the human body is divided into the different regions like this is the head region this is the neck region and this whole is the trunk and this trunk is also divided the upper part is known as the thorax divided with the abdominal pelvic region with the help of the diaphragm and this is the upper limb and this one is the lower limb and the area in between the lower limb is known as perineum so this is how the human body is divided into the different region so a study of the human body region wise is known as the regional anatomy and there is another branch in the gross anatomy that is the systemic anatomy so systemic anatomy deals with the human body on the basis of the different systems like cardiovascular system respiratory system gastrointestinal system and there is another branch of anatomy known as comparative anatomy as we know that the human beings are evolved from from the very primate animal that's why it carries the similarities between its primates or its ancestors that's why this correlation between its ancestors or primates are studied in the comparative anatomy here we can see the human embryo the adult human and a fish so we can see this blue colored structures they are forming the nervous system or the brain and the spinal cord in the human and similar they are going to form the brain and the spinal cord also in the fishes the structure is similar like this is the gastrointestinal tract where we can see the pharyngeal pouches and the pharyngeal pouches are present also in the human which are going to form the structures of the head and neck so you see the primitive topography of the other animals or the primitive animals and the adult human carry the similarity and this similarities between the primates and the human being are studied in the comparative anatomy and we have the another specialty of the anatomy known as clinical anatomy which deals with the study or which deals with the characteristics that has undergone changes during the illness that is dealt in the clinical anatomy and the surgical anatomy another branch of anatomy where the different landmarks of the body like the landmarks formed by the different bones different cartilages and these landmarks are utilized for to proceed the surgical techniques and we have the another branch of anatomy the radiographic anatomy where the anatomical structures of the human body are visualized with the help of the radiograph here we can see the radiograph of a chest where we can see this is the mediastinum we have is the heart is present the ribs are present in the white color and the air filled lungs is displayed in a black color so this is the normal chest and if this topography is changed and that changes if it is visualized in the radiography we can identify that change with the other history and make a proper diagnosis that is the aspect of the radiographic anatomy and there is another branch the cross sections anatomy where the cross sections are made 
and the different body organs present at that level of a cross sections are studied and this cross sections can be obtained by the different advancement of the radiological technique as well like MRI. We can see the another branch of anatomy that is the developmental anatomy. So it examines the changes occurring from the day of conception till the physical maturity. And the similar branch is there that is the embryology that studies with the processes or changes occurring during the first two months of embryonic development. These are the two branches, additional branches of the human anatomy. Now we are going to talk about how the human body is actually formed. What is the level of organization of a human body? Till now we studied about how the human body is studied under the different branches or the subdivisions of the anatomy. So when you see a book, how the text is organized, we can see. Every book, it starts from an alphabet. The alphabet combines to form words, words combine to form sentence, sentence combine to form paragraph, and paragraph combine to form chapter, and finally the chapters are compiled to form a book. This is the arrangement of a book, and similar is the topography of the human body. So, our organism or human body, its elementary composition is atoms and molecules. And these atoms and molecules combine to form cells, cells combine to form tissues, tissues combine to form organ, organ combine to form systems, and finally the system compiles and the organism is formed. So I have shown you one picture over here. The elementary level is the chemical level, that is the atom. So these are the different elements present in the human body. The highest is the hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen and other trace elements are also present like calcium, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, sulfur, chlorine, magnesium, iron, iodine, silicon, fluorine, copper, manganese, zinc, selenium, cobalt, molybdenum, cadmium, chromium, tin, aluminium and boron. So these are the elemental compositions of the human body and these elements combines to form molecules. So when you see in the fundamental level what we see is saw that the human body is compiled with the different elements and these are maybe either inorganic or organic but this inorganic or organic materials they combine to form a human and that is beyond the physicality that is that is the wonder of a nature that has transformed this physicality to a metaphysicality that is the beautiful gift of a nature that we human being possess and when you see the molecular composition of our body the 66 percent is the water followed by proteins lipids and 3% is the carbohydrate. This is the molecular composition of the human body and we have the famous molecule that is the DNA. That is the different elements combined to form a molecule and I have given you the example that is the DNA is the best example of a molecules present in the human body. And these molecules combine to form the organelle like example a mitochondria. And the organelle combined to form a cell, like I have displayed the picture of a smooth muscle cell. And what is actually the cell then? The cells are the functional and the building units of all living organisms. And they are held together by intercellular junctions and the matrix. So this is the cell. And over here I have displayed the picture of a smooth muscle cell. And these cells when you see in the body there are the different types of cells present we will study about these different cells one by one on the upcoming lectures like in the human body like nerve cell is present muscle cell is present and muscle cells also there are different types like 
voluntary muscle cell smooth muscle cells cardiac muscle cells like the bone cell is present reproductive cells like ovum is present in the female sperm is present in the male and this ovum you see that is the largest cell of the human body and we have the body cells different like white blood white blood cells and the different glandular cells are present also in the human body and these cells they combine to form the tissue and i have shown you the pictures of a smooth muscle tissue where the different smooth muscles are added together to form a tissue and there are four basic types of tissue present in the human body and each one ha has a specific function like the epithelial tissue it provides the pr protection connective tissue it provides the support muscular tissue it provides the contraction and nervous tissue it has the conductive ability so on the upcoming lectures we will study about this tissues present in the human body one by one and this tissue like i have shown that over here the connective tissue is present the smooth muscle cells or the smooth muscle tissue is present epithelial tissue is present so the different tissues combine to form an organ so i have displayed the picture of a blood vessels that is the organ and this organ is formed by the compilation of the different body tissues and the different organs combine to form a particular organ level system so over here this blood vessels combine with a pumping organ and it forms a cardiovascular system in our human body there are 11 different systems present like when you see just over here we studied about how the cardiovascular system is actually formed with the help of the blood vessels and the heart they togetherly act as a unit to form the cardiovascular system like we have the integumentary system the skeletal system the muscular system the nervous system the endocrine system lymphatic system respiratory system digestive system urinary system and the reproductive system and this systems all the systems compile together to form a complete human being so we start from the physicality and all this physicality combine to form a human that can go beyond the physicality up to the metaphysicality that is the wonderful gift of the nature and the wonderful creation of the nature that has ever been created is the human being so i over here in this picture i have shown the formation of another system that is the urinary system where the different organs like kidney ureter urinary bladder these different organs are compiled together to form one system that is the urinary system we can make a pause over here and go through this slide now we are going to study the human system one by one the first one is the integumentary system so this integumentary system we see it consists of hairs the skin like epidermis and the associated glands and the fingernails they are some of the components of the integumentary system so when you see over here in this chart we see that the skin consists of the epidermis and the dermis so the epidermis it covers the body surface and provides the protection to the deeper structures and dermis it has got the abundant blood supply that's why it nourishes the epidermis and provides strength and also the secretory portions of the glands are present in the dermis and when we talk about the hair follicles the hair follicles produce the hairs and this hair follicles have got the abundant nerve supply that's why any changes or deviation in this follicles can be sensed as the information that can be processed in the human brain that any changes can are going in the body surface with the help or with the with the help of the sensation perceived by this hair follicles and the hairs provides the protection for the head and the other body organs and in the hair follicles associated with the hair follicles are the sebaceous glands which produce the lipid that lubricate the shaft of the hair and also the epidermis and in the skin we have got the sweat gland the sweat gland produce the sweat and that help in cooling our body that when the sweat evaporates the heat is also dissipated 
and it helps in cooling of our body and nails it produce or it's sorry it provide the protection to the tip of our fingers where the smooth soft part is present and the skin we have got the different sensory receptors with helps in the perception of the different senses like touch pressure temperature and pain and beneath the skin is the subcutaneous layer cutis means the skin sub means below so subcutaneous means the layer of layer present beneath the skin that is the subcutaneous layer which stores the fat and it attaches the skin to the deeper structures and insulate against the heat loss so greater the subcutaneous fat more is the insulating tendency provided we have got another system that is the skeletal system the skeletal system when we see the skeleton present in the axis of a body is known as the axillary skeleton which consists of the skeleton of the head the vertebral column and the ribs but in the axillary skeleton we see in the axis we see the pectoral girdle and the pelvic girdles are also present but actually they are not the part of the axillary skeleton though they are present in the axis of a body they are the part of the appendicular skeleton so appendix means something that is hanging so appendicular skeleton denotes that the skeleton hanging to the axillary skeleton so the skeletal system consists of the bone cartilages and joints where this bones and cartilages of different regions they come together or they articulate with each other and it provides support it protects the soft tissues bones they also store the materials minerals sorry and this axillary skeleton when you see i have just told that it is consists of the skull the vertebral column the ribs and the sternum so the skull provides protection to the brain the chest region or ribs it provides the protection to the sorry cardio cardiovascular organ and the respiratory organ and appendicular skeleton when you see it bears the weight and it provides the different help in the manipulative action along with the support of the muscles and this bones are also the primary site of the production of the red blood cell but later on what happens is that this bone marrow from where the red blood cells are being produced they are replaced with the yellow marrow that is with the fat but still we have got the red blood cells producing region in the bone in the adults also like in the iliac crest like in the ribs they are still the red bone marrow present from where the bone marrow aspiration also is done in the adult cases so detail about that we will study on the upcoming lectures so another one is the muscular system the muscular system as the name denotes it is composed of the different muscles present in the body so there are different muscles like the muscular system when you see over here it consists of the skeletal muscles so skeletal means the it denotes that the muscles are associated with the skeleton that's why the name is given skeletal muscles so it provides the movement and the different parts of the GIT like the upper part and the lower part of the GIT they are composed of the skeletal muscle that's why it has also the particular role in the digestive system and with the contraction it produces the heat and it provides the support to the skeleton and also the soft tissues present within them like the neurovascular structures present within the different bundles of the muscles and the axial muscles we have got the axial muscles present in the axis of a body appendicular muscles present in the appendicular part like the upper limb and the lower limb and these muscles are added together with the bone with the help of the circular structures known as tendon and if this circular structures tendon is flattened that is the aponeurosis so this tendon and the aponeurosis that harness the force of a contraction to perform the specific tasks we have got another system that is the nervous system so the nervous system can be classified into the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system 
so the central nervous system it acts as a control and integrative section sorry a region of the body and the central nervous system consists of the brain which is the integrative center of the body that integrates and provides the information through the voluntary and the autonomic nerves to control this voluntary and the autonomic activities and we have got the another part of the central nervous system that is the spinal cord and this is spinal cord it is the relay station for the passage of the information to the brain and there is another part of the central nervous system that is the special senses like eyes ear nose tongue and skin and they have got the activities or the role like sight hearing smell taste and equilibrium and associated with the central nervous system is the peripheral circuit that is the peripheral nervous system so this peripheral nervous system it carries the information and transmit to the central nervous system or carries the information that are given by the central nervous system to the peripheral organ that may be to the organ of the uh, sorry uh, to the upper limb and the lower limb or the information to the different visceras and we have got another system that is the endocrine system so this endocrine system is composed of the different endocrine glands like the pineal gland that is present in the head in the uh, in the posterior side of the brain and this pineal gland it act as a biological clock that regulates the day night rhythm and it also control the timing of a reproductions like in the dog they have got the particular breeding seasons and that is also regulated through the pineal gland and the hypo role of hypothalamus is also linked uh, with that control of reproduction that is the more detailed study on that uh, will deal on the upcoming lectures and the next one is the pituitary gland it is the master gland of our body that regulates almost of all the glands present in our body and the next one is the thyroid gland this thyroid gland controls the tissue metabolism and also regulates the calcium level present in the body the next one is the parathyroid gland that also has the role in regulating the calcium level along with the secretions from the thyroid gland the thymus it is it is the site for the maturation of the lymphocyte the suprarenal gland or the adrenal gland it adjusts the water level it has got the role in the tissue metabolism and it also plays a role in the regulation of the cardiovascular and the respiratory activity the kidney though it filters the blood and forms the urine it has also got the endocrine functions like it can produce the erythropoietin and that help in regulating the red blood cells production and also it helps the regulation of the blood pressure and the pancreas it has got the role of both endocrine and the exocrine system and through the endocrine system it regulates the blood glucose level by secreting insulin and the gonads though they are destined for the production of the gametes they have also got the endocrine functions like in test like in male we have got the testis that regulates the sexual characteristics and reproductive functions through the production of the testosterone and in the ovaries they are present in the female they have also got the similar functions and they produce the hormones like estrogen and progesterone we have got another system that is cardiovascular system cardia denotes the heart and vascular denotes the blood vessels so the heart and the blood vessels they are togetherly forming the cardiovascular system it consists of the heart which acts as a pumping organ it pumps the blood and the bloods from pumped by the heart they are carried to the different body parts with the help of a vessels they are the arteries it carries the oxygenated blood actually not in the true all cases but we can remember that it carries the blood away from the heart that is the actual definition to the arteries and we have got the veins this blue colored over here are the veins that carries the blood towards the heart and the exchange of the materials between the tissues and the blood vessels occurs at the level of the capillary where 
we can call it as the capillary as a site of a exchange of the materials between the tissue and the blood vessels and this action is performed in the cardiovascular system by the blood which carries the of different gases like oxygen carbon dioxide and it also delivers the nutrients and removes the waste products and it has got the also the role in the temperature regulation and it also provides the immunity so these are the basic functions of the blood which is a component of the cardiovascular system the another one is the lymphatic system as i just told that there is the exchange of material at the level of the capillary the tissue fluids oozes out of the capillary and after the exchange of the material this tissue fluid is transported back into the capillary but all the fluids are not transported are not able to move inside the capillary so to transport that remnants of the fluid present around the tissue back into the normal circulation the lymphatic system do play the role so this is one of the function of the lymphatic system and it is not only limited to this function so we'll see what are the different components of the lymphatic system and what are their primary functions as i just told that the lymphatic vessels it carries the lymph from the area around the tissue back into the normal circulation lymph node they are actually the screening gate present in the root of the lymph vessels where different lymphocytes are present and they screen that lymph if any pathogens are present it stimulates the immune response and the spleen which is another component of the lymphatic system which circulates or which regulates the circulating blood and this spleen it is actually or another function is that it is the graveyard of the rbc after the death of the rbc these are recycled at the spleen so that is another function of the spleen and the another component of the lymphatic system is the thymus it controls and maintains the maturation of the lymphocyte that is the t lymphocyte the next system is the respiratory system the components of the respiratory systems are the nasal cavities and the paranasal sinuses and the functions associated with these cavities and sinuses are it filters it warms it humidifies the air and also detects the smell the olfactory receptors are present in the nasal cavity and we have got the another component that is the pharynx and this is the common chamber for the digestive system and the respiratory system so it conducts the air to the larynx and the larynx we can see over here it is the part that guards the opening of the trachea and it has got the vocal cord where from where the sound is produced and the trachea the larynx continues as a trachea it is a windpipe which is kept patent with the help of the cartilage and it has got the pseudo stratified epithelium that traps the dust particles present in the air that we inhale and help in Produce or help in excreting them through the propylene action, and the trachea continues as a lesser diameter tube known as bronchi that has got the similar functions to the trachea, and the air is finally delivered to the lungs, and in the lungs we have got the functional unit or air-containing bag that are the alveoli where the exchange of the gases between the blood and the alveolar chambers do. takes place and another system is the digestive system the digestive system it consists of the digestive tract and the associated organs associated glands which help in the digestion of the food particle it consists of the oral cavity this oral cavity acts as a receptacle of a food and it helps in the breaking down of a food particle into the minute part into the minute structures through the chewing action and in the oral cavity there is a secretion from the salivary gland which help in the lubrication of a food and it makes the food palatable also through by mixing the food particles and help them 
spreading into the tongue on the all the part of the tongue and the preliminary digestion of the food particles begins in the oral cavity with the help of the secretions from the salivary gland too and this oral cavity continues as a pharynx which is a common chamber rest shared with the respiratory system and the cardiovascular system both and it conducts the food to the esophagus which is a muscular tube that delivers the food to the stomach and the stomach it is a temporary storage site for the food particle and it there is the preliminary or the partic uh, partial digestion of the food particles also takes place in the stomach and the stomach continues as a small intestine where the complete digestion of the food particles and their absorption takes place and the undigested food particles are transported to the large intestine and finally excreted out and with this tract associated are the different glands like the liver which produce the liver and it has also got the hemopoietic function like it produces the blood cells and their next one is the gallbladder associated with this digestive tract which stores the uh, bile and help the concentration of that bile and we have the another associated glands with the digestive system that is the pancreas which produce the alkaline fluid and really that is released into the small intestine which help in the digestion of the food particles and the function of the large intestine as i told where there is the temporary storage of the fecal material takes place and they are continuously passed towards the rectum for its excretion through the defecation and over here the absorption of a water also takes place the next one is the urinary system the urinary system consists of the kidney its ureter urinary bladder and urethra so all these organs compile to form the urinary system the kidney as a urinary organ it filters the blood and forms the urine through which it regulates the blood ph and ionic concentration and as i told that it has got the endocrine function as it produce the erythropoietin the next one is the ureter that transport the urine form up to the bladder for its temporary storage and in the urinary bladder the urine is temporarily stored till the micturition reflex and after the initiation of the micturition reflex this urine is excreted to the excretory organ through a part known as urethra so all these organs compile to form the urinary system and next one is the reproductive system and this reproductive system is the least important system for the survival of the human being we do not need reproductive system for our survival but it is a very important system for the continuation of our generation like it consists of the testis which produce the sperm and also the hormone that's why the testis is also categorized as a endocrine gland and the accessory gland uh, organs are present in the reproductive system like epididymis where the maturation of the sperm takes place and after its maturation the sperm is carried by the vas deferens or the duct ductus deferens and to the volume of a sperm the large volume of the fluid is added through the secretion of the seminal gland and similarly the fluid and enzymes from the prostate glands are also added to the sperm and it forms a bulk known as semen and the urethra in male it is acting as a common site for the passage of the urine and the semen both and the male reproductive system has got the external part that is the penis and the scrotum the penis is a copulatory organ that helps in the deposition of the sperm in the vagina during copulation and the scrotum it is a muscular bag present over here that provides the protection to the testis and also helps in the regulation of the temperature of a testis because the lower temperature is required for the sperm production and the female reproductive system now so we see that 
all the systems present in the human body they are similar to both male and female but reproductive is, is the only system that is different between the male and the female reproductive system so it has got the different components like ovaries it produces the oocytes and hormones and this oocytes and hormones produced by this ovaries are carried to the uterus through a tube known as uterine tube where the fertilization also takes place like actually it takes place in the ampulla of the uterine tube and uterus it is a muscular bag and it is a common home for every one of us so first home for every one of us is the uterus and here it undergo changes during the menstrual cycle as well and the uterus externally opens into the vagina which is the site where there is the sperm deposition occurs and it also acts as a route for the passage of a baby during delivery and the female has got the external genitalia like clitoris which is similar to the penis and the labia the external part that contains the different glands which lubricates its secretions lubricates the vagina that is the root vaginal root and the mammary gland that is actually not the part of the reproductive system but since it produces the milk that is used for feeding the baby we study this mammary gland under the heading the reproductive system but actually the mammary gland is not the part of the reproductive system and you can make a pause over here see the different systems over here the functions and the associated organs the similar that i have told now this is just for your recapitulation you can make a pause over here and go through it and this different body organs they are placed in the human body within the particular chambers and our body has got the three main chambers the ventral chambers and the dorsal chambers in the dorsal chambers we have got the cranial cavity that is a cavity formed by the bones of the skulls and the spinal cavity that is the cavity present within the vertebral column that is present on the dorsal side of the body and we have got the ventral cavity on the upper part of the body we have got the thoracic cavity that is separated from the abdominal pelvic cavity i would like to call it as the abdominal pelvic cavity so the thoracic cavity and the abdominal pelvic cavity they are separated with the help of a diaphragm and this abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity both of them are continuous are continuous to one another so when we see over here this cranial cavity it consists of the brain and the vertebral or the spinal cavity it consists of the spinal cord and when you see in the thoracic cavity in the thoracic cavity as well we have got the pleural cavity on the either side that contains the lungs and in between the lungs there remains a cavity that is known as mediastinum and in the inferior part of the mediastinum we have got the periocardial cavity that contains the heart and above in the upper part of the mediastinum we have got the different parts like the vessels arising from the heart and the trachea and the other structures are also present in the superior mediastinum and in the abdominal cavity the digestive viscerals are present whereas in the pelvic cavity the urogenital organs are present like urinary bladder and the organs associated with the reproductive organ and the part of the git that is the rectum is also present in the pelvic cavity similar it is just for your recapitulation everything that i have told just now you can make a pause and study this so this is again the same thing that i have explained in a chart form now when you see the organs of the abdominal cavity this organs of the abdominal cavity they can be studied or positioned into the different locations with the help of the different planes so over here we i am going to deal with this 
position of the different abdominal viscera with the help of this two lines one is the vertical line that is passing through the midline of a body and another the horizontal line that is passing horizontally around the umbilicus so the line is known as median plane and the trans umbilical plane with the help of this we can divide the abdominal region into the four different quadrants the two upper one and the two lower quadrants and when we see in the upper quadrant we have got the liver so this is the liver right lobe of a liver and the left lobe of a liver it is present into the left upper quadrant and we see the gallbladder present into the right upper quadrant this is the gallbladder present on the inferior surface of a liver and this is the stomach so the maximum part of the stomach that lies into the left upper quadrant and only a part lies into the right upper quadrant and the transverse colon is present over here and in this quadrant we posterior to it there lies the kidney the right kidney over here and the left kidney over here and similarly below the trans umbilical plane we see the right lower and the left lower quadrant over here the appendix is present the cecum is present and the part of the ascending colon is present also in this quadrant and similarly when you see in the left lower quadrant the sigmoid colon is present part of the descending colon is present and in the pelvic cavity we see the rectum is present over here and detail about it you can study over here what are the structures present in the right upper quadrant left upper quadrant right lower quadrant and left lower quadrant the things that i have told just now you can make a recapitulation and this abdominal cavity also can be studied on the different aspect by dividing into the nine different regions just now we have divided into the four different quadrants and it can be also divided into the nine different regions with the help of the two mid clavicular planes one subcostal plane and the next one is the intertubercular plane mid clavicular denotes that the lines are passing in between the from starting from the midpoint of a clavicle over here the mid inguinal point so when we join to this mid inguinal point and the mid clavicular point we get the two lateral planes that are known as the mid clavicular plane subcostal this is the costal margin present and the line present below that sub means below so it is the subcostal plane and this is the hip bone when you put your hand on the west you can feel the tubercle on this hip bone that is the iliac tubercle and the line passing through it is the intertubercular plane so with the help of this we can divide the abdominal region into the nine different regions that is the umbilical region this is the epigastric region this is the hypogastric or the pubic region this is the right hypochondrium left hypochondrium right lumbar or right flank left lumbar or left flank this is the right inguinal or right groin this is the left groin or left inguinal region so these are the names of the nine region with uh, this is how the abdominal cavity can be divided with the help of these four different planes this is the same thing and this is how the position of the viscera takes place in this nine different regions like in the right hypochondrium we have got the right lower liver the fundus uh, the gallbladder is present similarly the maximum part of the stomach and the left lobe of liver they are present in the epigastric region the maximum part of the small intestine that is present in the umbilical region similarly the appendix and the cecum that is present in the, the right inguinal region sigmoid colon is present in the left inguinal region and in the hypogastric or the pubic region there is a presence of the urogenital organ so this is how the positioning of the viscera takes place with the help of this nine different regions and they are actually used to analyze the referred areas of the pain from where the pain is being arised and this is the textual view of the same thing that i have explained right now you can make a pause go through it and recapitulate the information that i spoke
and this is how the position of the visceras takes place we saw the brain and the spinal cavity spinal cord present in the cranial cavity and the vertebral cavity respectively the lungs present in the pleural cavity the heart is present into the pericardial cavity in the superior mediastinum there is a presence of the trachea and the vessels arising from the heart and vessels entering into the heart they are present into the mediastinum and the ab in the abdominal cavity we saw the different visceras like liver stomach gallbladder small intestine large intestine and how these visceras are located with the help of the four different quadrants and the nine different regions that we just studied right now so let's have a glance in this picture imagine that you are the one who is lying in the bed and these are the doctors which are talking about your case like one is telling the tommy act one is telling about the kidney stone and someone is explaining about your conditions like there is a boo boo around your belly button reason so when you hear the doctors talking in this terms would you like to be the patient of such clinicians of course not so to explain the particular reason or the particular term we need a particular vocabulary that is the precise vocabulary is required and this vocabulary will study how the human body is term and we are going to now study the, some of the vocabularies used for explaining the different body parts that is different from what you have studied till now like the forehead is called the frontal region the eye is called the orbital region nose is present that is in the nasal region oral region this is the oral region and this chin is known as the mental region the cheek is known as the buccal region the ear is known as the otic region the neck it is the cervical region and the chest is known as the pectoral region and this breastbone is called the sternal region and the breast is called the mammary gland and in the abdominal region we see what we call as a navel it is now called as a umbilical region in the anatomical term this region is the pelvic region and in the upper limb we have got the different parts like the shoulder region it consists of this pectoral region and on the posterior side we can, there is a scapular region which is which i will show you right now and from shoulder joint to elbow joint we call this part as a brachium or brachial region and part from the elbow joint to the wrist joint we call it as a antibrachium or antibrachial region that is the forearm and the part distal to this wrist joint is known as manus or hand and similarly the junction between this trunk and the lower limb is known as the inguinal region or groin region and the part of the lower limb between the hip joint and the knee joint is known as the femoral region from the part of the lower limb between the knee joint and the ankle joint is known as the leg and the part distal to this ankle joint is known as pedis so these are some of the vocabularies that are used to describe the different body part and similarly when you see the body from the posterior side like base of the skull is known as the occipital region similarly back of the neck is known as the nuchal region and this point on the shoulder the elevation point is known as the acromial region and the this region is known as the scapular region and the prominent point on your upper, or upper limb is known as in the elbow of the part it is known as the olecranon region and this the buttock region is known as the gluteal region and the knee part is known as the popliteal part and this calf is known as the sural region so these are some of the basic vocabularies used to explain the body parts and we'll be using this vocabularies on our upcoming lectures so do not bother about learning this vocabularies at once right now you will be well acquainted with this vocabulary when you keep on studying the anatomy on the different while while, while we are will be while we will be studying the different body parts so these are the different anatomical regions and what it indicates
so you can make a pause go through it and make a revision of what we studied just now so to study this human body the human body must be kept in a particular position or the particular position the reference point of a particular position of a body is taken to study the different body organs that is reference point we call it as a anatomical position so in the anatomical position the person stand erect with their two feet together the upper limb on the side of a trunk and the palm is facing anteriorly the toe is also facing anteriorly and the person is looking front without looking upward or downward it is straightly looking to the front so this position is known as the anatomical position the person is standing erect with two feet are together the upper limbs are present on the side of a trunk with palm facing anterior not towards the body and the person is straightly looking forward that features when we togetherly make up that is the anatomical position so all the features of the human body or the relation of the human body will be described in this anatomical position so now talking about the history of the anatomy the history when we talk about the history of anatomy it is as long as the civilization of the human when we look at our ancestor they used to kill the animals and they know how where to make a striking of a arrow or where to hit to animals to make them fall down or to kill them like they used to hammer on a head region they used to bow the arrow on a chest region so they have the particular idea or some of the brief idea that it has got some of the vital organ this regions have got the some of the vital organ so when we make a damage to our that organ the animal may be may be killed or they may die so that was the preliminary knowledge of anatomy now the different advancement has been made and it has undergone a series of process of addition of a knowledge so the history of anatomy it was started from around the civilization around the mediterranean sea and in the greeks it has got the particular role or particular contribution in the development of the or in the advancement of the knowledge in anatomy like hippocrates who was a greek philosopher who is also known as the father of medicine aristotle he studied the structures and the function of the human body and in egypt the first medical school was established where the cadaveric dissections were performed and the egyptian the herophilus he is known as the father of anatomy and after the fall of alexandria there arises uh, there arose a uh, era of rome where the galen he acted as a supreme authority in the anatomy he propounded large number of the information regarding the anatomy and after the fall of rome there was a dark age in the history of anatomy and the medical knowledge was shaped by the islamic world the byzantium and the monasteries then came the age out of dark and the medical school was established in bologna italy and then came the renaissance period where the leonardo da vinci plays a very crucial role in the renaissance uh, in the in renaissance of the anatomy and the vasilis he is also known as the reformer of the anatomy he corrected the information provided by the provided by the galen by providing the correct information through the cadaveric dissection that's why he is also known as the father of the modern anatomy and with then the advancement in the different techniques kept on adding the information in the knowledge of anatomy and there is now the modern medicine and this is how we came to end and if you do have any updates or suggestions you can hit a like on my facebook page www.facebook.com/danaclecture you can also subscribe my youtube channel www.youtube.com/danaclecture if you can if you have 
any suggestions you can directly email to me at anatomyjunk.junk at the rate gmail.com so i wish that you had a fruitful time during this lecture and this was about the brief information or the preliminary information about the human body and every journey starts with a single step and this is the single step in learning the medical science through the study of the human body that is the introductory information in the human body thank you very much i hope that i'll receive your critical suggestions and information in my facebook youtube and email address